Hello everyone, this is your host Urvashi Chahan. Welcome to Quotes Today by Live Law, your one-step destination to all legal developments in the country. Let us start. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal today withdrew his petition filed in the Supreme Court challenging the order passed by the Delhi High Court on 21st June, staying the operation of the trial court's order that granted him bail in the money laundering case connected with the alleged Delhi liquor policy. Kejriwal's lawyer informed the court that yesterday the Delhi High Court passed the final order on ED's stay application and pronounced the reasons for staying the bail order. In this view of the matter, the present petition was withdrawn to file a fresh petition challenging both the 25th June and the 21st June orders of the Delhi High Court. Granting Kejriwal liberty to file a fresh petition, a vacation bench of Justices Manoj Mishra and SPN Bhatti dismissed the present petition as withdrawn. Also, the CBI today sought five days of custody remand for Kejriwal, who was produced before the vacation judge Amitabh Rawat of Rao Seven New Courts. Yesterday, the probe agency examined the chief minister in Tihar jail, where he is lodged in judicial custody in relation to the money laundering case being probed by the Enforcement Directorate. Kejriwal's statement was recorded yesterday. This was asked after the Delhi High Court stayed the bail granted to the chief minister in the PMLA case. After court's permission, the CBI today examined Kejriwal in court and then formally arrested him in the matter. During the hearing today, senior advocate Vikram Chaudhary, appearing for Kejriwal, contended that the CBI has acted in a biased manner, submitting that the investigation of the case has been pending since 2022. Chaudhary stated that Kejriwal was called as a witness once, to which he cooperated, and never as an accused. He said that without any notice, the CBI made him an accused in the case. He contended that the facts mentioned in CBI's remand application did not specify any details. That CBI only arrested Kejriwal after he got bail in the money laundering case and that the timing shows that the arrest is illegal. CBI's counsel advocate DP Singh took the court through the facts of the case and Kejriwal's alleged involvement. He stated that at the peak of COVID-19, the liquor policy was framed with the influence of the South Group. The agency further alleged that the South Group's report was ultimately adopted as the government policy. Singh contended that Kejriwal's custody was required as he was placing the onus on Manish Sisodia and needed to be confronted. Importantly, Arvind Kejriwal himself addressed the court today and denied CBI's claim. He further claimed that agency's idea is simply to sensationalize things and make headlines. Stay tuned with Live Law to know more about this matter. Coming to an update on the matter concerning rampant felling of trees in Delhi's Ridge Forest area in violation of Supreme Court's previous orders in MC Mehta versus Union of India. The Delhi Development Authority has come under the fire of the Supreme Court for not giving information regarding the visit of Delhi Lieutenant Governor V.K. Saxena at the site where trees were cut in violation of the orders of the court. The DDA Vice Chairperson is facing a contempt case for cutting down trees. Earlier this week, a Supreme Court bench had noted that the emails sent by the executive engineer to the contractor had referred to the directions issued by the Delhi LG to cut the trees after visiting the site. As the executive engineer denied the emails, the court directed the DDA to come clean on the aspect of LG's visit and show the official records regarding it. Today, senior advocate Maninder Singh, appearing for the DDA vice chairman, told the bench that DDA was trying to locate the records. Unhappy with this response, Justice Oak asked Singh if the vice chairman had inquired with the concerned department, called for the reports or asked the officers who were present in the meeting. Responding to the queries, Singh gave the name of an officer who was present at the time of LG's visit, Mr. Ashok Kumar Gupta. The court issued notice to the said officer and asked him to file an affidavit as to what exactly transpired and if any directions were issued by the Honorable LG. The court has granted the DDA vice chairperson one more week to comply with the directions. Also, the bench expressed surprise at the authorities not locating the timber. It commented, and I quote, We are 100% sure that this is the tip of the iceberg. This must have happened in several cases and trees must have been felled. That's why we are taking a strong view so that the message goes out. An MPMLA court in Uttar Pradesh's Sultanpur district today directed Congress leader Rahul Gandhi to appear before it on 2nd July 
to record his statement in connection with a defamation case filed against him for his alleged remarks against the Union Home Minister Amit Shah. The complaint was filed in August 2018 against Gandhi for his alleged objectionable comments against Shah made at a press conference in Bengaluru. The complainant referred to Gandhi's comments that the BJP claims to believe in honest and clean politics but has a party president who is an accused in a murder case. Let me tell you, Amit Shah was the BJP president when Gandhi made the comment. About four years before this remark, a special CBI court in Mumbai had discharged Shah in a 2005 fake encounter case when he was a minister of state for home in Gujarat. In an important update, the Bombay High Court today dismissed the plea filed by nine female students challenging the dress code prescribed by the authorities of a Mumbai college. The petitioners are students of NG Acharya and DK Marathe College of Art, Science and Commerce in their second and third years of BSc and BSc Computer Science programs. The college recently issued an undated notice titled Instruction for Students on its website and through a WhatsApp message mandating a dress code that explicitly forbids the wearing of burqa, niqab, hijab, caps, badges and stoles. Advocate Altaf Khan representing the petitioners said that the dress code violates the petitioners right to choice, bodily integrity and autonomy. He distinguished this case from the Karnataka High Court judgment on the hijab ban in junior colleges, noting that this case concerns senior college students who have a dress code but not a uniform. If you remember, in 2022, the Karnataka High Court upheld the hijab ban, ruling that hijab was not an essential part of Islamic faith and that the government had the authority to enforce uniform rules. Senior advocate Anil Atunkar, representing the college, explained that ban applies to all religious symbols and is not targeted at Muslims. He emphasized that the college's policy is to prevent the open display of religious symbols unless they are essential under fundamental rights to religion. After hearing both sides, the division bench of Justice A.S. Chandrurkar and Justice Rajesh Patil said that they were not inclined to interfere in the matter and the petition was dismissed. The District Magistrate Srinagar has imposed restrictions under Section 144 of the Criminal Procedure Code on holding of elections to the JNK Bar Association Srinagar and warned of punitive action in case of gathering of four or more people at the District Court Complex Mominabad and Batamalu or any other location for the purpose of the HCBA elections until further notice. The order in effect bars the holding of elections on the ground. The district magistrate claimed that there is an emergent situation which can lead to breach of peace and disruption of public order if Bar Association proceeds forward with the scheduled elections. In his order, the DM has also highlighted a communication from Kashmir Advocates Association or the KAA, which is a parallel Bar Association wherein they have raised various concerns with respect to legality and authenticity of the Jammu and Kashmir High Court Bar Association Srinagar, citing various reasons such as propagating separatist ideology. The order states that the JKHCBA is not a registered body, while the rival KAA has been confirmed as a registered association under the Society's Registration Act. The DM said that any violation of this order shall invite punitive action under the Indian Penal Code. And lastly, the Patna High Court has observed that a victim or a deceased who caught fire and suffered 100% burn injuries would not have been in a position to give any statements implicating the accused, thereby casting doubts on the correctness of claim in the dying declaration. The division bench of Justice Ashutosh Kumar and Justice Jitendra Kumar was considering a criminal appeal against conviction under IPC for dowdy death and murder in this case. The appellants here are husband and father-in-law of the deceased who died due to burn injuries. The dying declaration of the deceased was recorded by the sub-inspector in presence of the brother of the deceased and a doctor at a hospital. The sub-inspector had recorded that the victim's husband and in-laws had set her on fire for not bringing two lakhs dowry from her home. But the appellants argued that the deceased died an accidental death as she was completely burnt she could not have made any statements as claimed by the prosecution. The High Court noted that the prosecution did not object to the fact that the victim had suffered 100% burn injuries. 
Regarding the dying declaration of the deceased, the court remarked that with such burn injuries to the extent of 100%, she would not have been in a position to make a detailed statement. The court questioned why the deceased's brother went straight to the police station after learning about his sister's burn incident instead of going to her matrimonial home first. The prosecution's case further raised doubts as it did not present any independent witnesses and it did not examine the deceased's son who had given a statement to the police that his mother caught fire while straining rice. The court held that the prosecution's case raised doubt that dying declaration was manipulated and that it could not prove the guilt of appellants beyond reasonable doubt. Therefore, it reversed the judgment of the trial court and acquitted the appellants in this case. If you wish to know more details about the cases that I mentioned here, you can visit our website at www.livelaw.in. Stay ahead with quick legal updates only on Live Law. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe and support us. You can also support us by donating through the thanks button at the bottom of our videos or consider becoming a member at just 89 rupees per month.